thrown it off guard and hit them exactly when they're weak. And then three star port, which can make you live forever. Let's see if they bring that out again in TVT or if they have other things in store for game number one in the top right for Vitality, he is Maru. In the bottom left, representing the Shopify Rebellion, our Blue Terran player is Bjorn. A lot of people looking for Bjorn to once again get to the finals of a premier tournament. A couple of times in the last year, it looked like it could be hopeful. He looked as on fire as anyone else when it came to the TVZ matchup. He was demolishing TVPs. And TVT was still promising, especially if like Maru did get knocked out elsewhere in the bracket. But then famously last year, he had the wrist issues. He just couldn't continue. And a very, very difficult and stressful match. So that's always on the back of people's minds minds even if he gets up to zero for instance here and it seems like he's winning game three there's always that like oh no is this gonna slip away which i'm sure was also on the forefront of people's minds in his last tvt against gumiho where it did almost all slip away didn't seem to be because of his wrists but nonetheless Bion gets close but can't quite get over that hump it is absolutely a challenge. It's going to be fascinating to see his approach throughout this series when he decides to pull out more aggressive builds, if he decides he can pull those out at all, because they really betrayed him yesterday against Gumiho. Even though he was in good positions with them, he wasn't able to execute well enough. And that's not something we commonly say, but having to rely on other kind of facets of your play when you're playing against Maru, well, that just ain't fun. The SCV scout here from Maru, he's been a little bit more cautious, spots that this is going to be mirrored build orders. And so Bjorn will be happy because his opponent scouted, and he did not have to. So we certainly are still seeing the initial evolution of this matchup and the Cyclones, the new ones were introduced, which was that we did have, you know, two, four Cyclones, maybe the drops were absolutely getting to be heavy in the meta to begin with, and then Cyclones were included. It was more of a question of how far are we going to push it, which we saw the extent in Atlanta. But between these two, I do expect some of those uh, big micro battles, maybe occasionally even with multiple Reapers and Hellions, but sure, yeah, absolutely. Medivacs dropping each other and then the uh it might come down to who is multitasking better we already see a little micro war going down maru getting the benefits as long as he doesn't lose his reaper and then it's a little questionable he did kill beyond if he built in the command center but now he's down a unit yeah down one unit and scv for him obviously went down but that isn't as important because it's out on the map now you get the counter attack here though from Bjorn. Can he get the SCV on that natural before the Cyclone pops out to defend? It's gonna be fairly close. I think the Cyclone might just about be here in time. Let's see if the Reaper can buy a few moments. You can see that Bjorn goes in, hits the Reaper a few times. He is gonna get the SCV. Cyclone will not be out just yet. So Bjorn is gonna get an SCV in return and delays that CC himself as he's actually gonna dive through to get a Reaper for a Reaper. In fact, that's a Reaper for two. That ain't so pretty. Yeah, you can see the Grimace actually on his camera. He knew that that was overzealous of him. Might have been willing to trade out one, but to trade everything out. Well, the good news is, I guess, is that you're both kind of a little more blind. Uh, Bjorn even added on a third Reaper, which if really he had three in total still surviving, he could have had a decent backstab, an extra couple of units to fill in a medevac, or just go alongside a medevac. And I am mentioning a medevac because I kind of assumed it would be that way, but no. Bjorn actually adding a tech lab right now. It is only Maru who has gone right into the medevac. So he'll have a little bit more of the presence on the opposite side of the map. But Maru obviously has a very solid and actually very standard follow-up for our old knowledge of TVT. One Cyclone for safety into tanks. So we'll talk more about the strategy choice here in a second. But I really want to see what the damage of Maru's medevac can do. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating as he's kind of taking the role I thought Bjorn would take in this uh, game and in this series in general. Well, Bjorn's going to be the defensive player. He does not have a bunker on the low ground, so it's going to be a little less defended. Obviously, he can still rely on the tank as he's going to be in range as these Cyclones unload initially. They do not know the tank is there, so he takes the first shot, and that's going to be a very short uh, drop-off. Does not last very long at all. He's going to jump onto the tank, but then the Cyclone is there as well, and that's a pushback. Still locked oh, no. onto that oh, medevac. No. That medevac oh. needs a boost away. It goes down and Bjorn kills double Cyclone. That is a catch and Maru knows that is not great because that's his map control gone bye-bye. Yeah, absolutely gone. He also knows uh, kind of what Bjorn is, is trying to do strategically. So just to focus on that for a second, it does seem like both of them are really trying to prove that they're a little better at that micro. You know, they both have actually overstepped, but Maru's overstep was a bit bigger. But strategically, to get into that now, if Bjorn successfully defends any incoming Cyclone attack and the next one's going to be Cyclone Raven with Matrix, 
but more so auditory. So either one would work. Then he's golden. He's already kind of moved over into the proper stage of TVT, moving over into the marine tank. Whereas Maru, if he cannot get a lot done with the cyclones, he's going to be relegated to using them kind of to control the map and stop any incoming push. But that's absolutely not guaranteed. And his tank count will absolutely take a hit for it as we potentially move into a mid-game TVT as well. So a lot of the problems are here for Maru to fix beyond playing kind of the more defensive style has really worked out for him. Yeah, no, it's absolutely been great for him so far. Now you're in this position where you've got a couple tanks up. You're starting to get to those Raven counts and Fionn is going to be at the stage where he's like, cool, my army's looking great. Your army's still very cyclone focused. And now we're going to take a real cool divergence because Maru is going to play into mech while Bjorn is playing into that stim pack. Yeah, okay, that does make sense considering the, uh, well, there, there are absolutely people who will still have eight cyclones on the map and be like, no, I'm still going to try and push bio. We see that all the time, actually. And it creates that classic dilemma of like, well, can I do anything with them? Do I get pushed by the tanks? But going into mech beyond this adds in, uh, obviously, a lot more tanks, a lot faster interference. Matrix number one goes off, takes the tank out of the equation. Now the second one is also out of a Equation. Beyond's Ravens were a little off to the side, but they come in to help out with some auto turrets, and that means that tank will be able to survive through the disable and be a critical defense in the upcoming push. A little uh, messy there for Bjorn as he drops a couple of auto turrets in return. His tank's back online. That should be enough to be okay here. And he does recover from this. But yeah, a little messy was a bit out of position. I even felt like the tank that got Matrix could have gotten away, but then it kind of stuck around a little longer than it should have done. Nonetheless, he's surviving for the moment, and we still have Maru's trying to get something done with these Cyclones, trying to keep his opponent contained in here while he gets his full mech play set up, and just make Bjorn worry. Don't give Bjorn the confidence to be moving out on the map and starting to take the activity you expect to see with the Marine Stimpak-based army. Yeah, and as the Observer is showing us, Bjorn has not scouted in some time. Now, Maru's definitely a player that you know can play mech, where, of course, if we were watching Bjorn's side or a Clem, for instance, you'd be like, you don't have to worry. It's going to be bio. But for Maru, like, he absolutely does this occasionally. Bjorn should be in the know that he really does need to scout. So this is the first time he's doing so. He's going to see a single engineering bay on the outside, which is a little odd, but of course, that's the big confirmation. That's the big reveal. All three factories scouted. He's going to commit to his push because he still feels like Maru is going to be a little under defended. The tanks have only recently been producing it two or three at a time, and are there going to be enough to actually hold on? I think so, because Beyond did just loot, use some Raven energy as well to go for auto turret harassment, meaning it can't do a lot of disables. That's what I was thinking. When the Ravens dropped down the extra auto turret, I was like, okay, I don't think you commit anymore, because without Matrixes, there's almost no chance you really push into up a ramp into any amount of siege tanks. He is getting a lot of SCVs out of this, but it's time to get out of here, because the Vikings are going to start chasing, and these Ravens will get, be hunted down now, so... Bjorn trying to slip away. Still has a few units out on the map as one Raven falls. He has put himself ahead on the workers. Let's see if he can do anything. I just I just don't see what the possibilities are with this army right now, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even with the Matrix on the front line, it still would be a questionable attack in. But Maru, you know, he is taking economic damage, and that is something that Bjorn is insisting upon. So the Raven skedaddled. The Medivacs went in, and they're going to grab another, like, seven SC. EVs and maybe even stall out an upgrade or target fire down a cyclone. I guess that also can happen. Natural still has two Marines that unfortunately are out, you know, yeah, if they go into range of the SCVs, get blasted by the tank. But 17 SCVs in total with Beyond still keeping the slower producing part of his army alive, which is obviously those tanks right there. Now that was such a great set of damage and now you're going to take advantage of this as well. This is very difficult to break once the position is set. Even with a bit of air control, you're going to lose a refinery. SCVs have to pull away for the moment as well. And so Bjorn just taking advantage of this so far. There's one Matrix that goes down, but we got the Unsiege. We back away. We lose nothing at all. And that is going to be nice for Bjorn. So definitely controlling this game well. It's just that question of can you deliver a finishing blow to someone that's so good at surviving with the most survivable of compositions. That's what every Terran asks of themselves when they go up against Maru, but especially Bjorn, because at the end of the day, we're kind of getting what we, you know, I was predicting. It's just, it's not bio in a three-star port and a bit of turtle, it's mech. But mech is still the defending composition, especially when those cyclones don't get a snowball going. So it's about 
Bion being able to keep up the pressure, not let Maru ever get comfortable, keep the tank count down preferably, actually find him trying to get a fourth base and then pounce on it and get the quick kill, get the faster bases, faster upgrades, and possibly much later down the road, his own star ports as well. We're not there yet. The barracks did fall and it has to be rebuilt because Maru is still not on his optimal amount of factory production. So that is a little awkward, but he's on top of it. Yep, getting that replaced in the next couple of moments, then can have him some extra factors if he does want to. Bjorn is really trying to position for something here, working around that left-hand side, but there's just so many siege tanks, it's so difficult to imagine a push in here. I mean, obviously set up the tanks here from afar and get some bits and pieces, but this feels like the extent of the damage you can deal rather than a big push in. But this is going to be nice to drop a few Marines off, decided he doesn't need to stick around and denying gas against a mech player is great, and he's really making sure a fourth doesn't get online while he puts his own fifth base online in position, so doing exactly what you need to do if you're not the mecha. Unfortunately, a push will come to shove. Like, this is now kind of more so the question as we witness Beyond not able to find significant amounts of damage. If Maru does get maxed out with his mech army and his three ravens still alive and the Viking control and does a successful push across the map, his army is better. Like, as long as there's not some, like, 360 no-scopes around, okay? His army is better. So that is now the timer for Bion, and he, of course, knows about it. Very accustomed to playing a lot of mech. He's been through all those metas and face Mara whenever he does it. But he also knows just how damn difficult it is to actually break him, whether it's defensive mech or defensive bio. Very, very true. That's uh, a lot of units still just on the map from Bion, just hovering around, waiting for their next opportunity. And Maru is about to start taking his fourth base, draw this kind of defensive line out a little bit more thinly. Maybe that's where Bjorn will find something extra. But I think most important, you put those extra starports down, you start playing a later game situation yourself because the Marine Marauder tank can only really take you so far. Mm -hmm. The extra starports that transition into air units, that really is the next step. So it's good to see Bjorn making that preemptively rather than as more of an afterthought. Yeah, yeah, it's very important that he actually starts to adapt to it. Now, he still has the ability to make an army much quicker if that is the choice, you know. He will still have the upgrades on that army, whereas Maru obviously will have the upgrades on the mech, including the air. Oh, but Bjorn, whoa, the drop from the top was actually an excellent addition, and Bjorn chooses a great moment to at least trade efficiently, but he's not actually breaking Maru. In fact, not at all. As the Vikings land, more tanks come up. At the end of the day, it's going to be Maru forced to lift his fourth, which is actually still nice. That was not yet a planetary, so that is a delay on the mining. A couple more Vikings, a couple more tanks possibly going down. Hot pickup on the Vikings from Maru's medevacs, actually. And we have ourselves a wash as far as the supply goes. The Terran player playing Bio is going to be able to remax a little bit faster, but then having to traverse the entire map, the momentum's not quite going to be there. So that, at the end of the day, it wasn't exactly what Bion wanted. No, I was a little bit worried because I, I feel like he saw the base initially. He was like, oh, I feel like I can make a move with this because the medivacs yeah. were at the top still hidden. The rest of the army suddenly turned. I was like, okay, running up past the rocks, he really got super choked from the south side and the army from the top just didn't quite bait enough fire away to kind of get him through that choke success successfully, yeah. which is why it was so much more of an even kind of supply at the end of the day, rather than the complete knockout blow that Bjorn might have been initially hunting for. A hundred percent. You see a, a pull like that, and it's just, they, they thought that they could obliterate them. You know, if they're, if they're at 20 supply above at the end of that, and Maru is rallying tanks and Vikings into literally just like 20 extra supply of units. I mean, that could be it, because we really have to have a critical mass of units as the mech player. But that hold was actually spectacular for the way that the game goes from here on. The fourth base gets planted back down, easy planetary. Maru knows he's not going to be attacked in a really rough fashion anytime soon. So he gets the extra expansions, literally gets his fifth also on location almost at the same time. And he is now almost guaranteed to get, to get maxed out. But this is where Bion's transfer into his own air is really important. I don't think, yeah, Maru, I think, hasn't really got many Vikings on the way or anything, but he's just now started out a couple of Thors, so there's some respect to the idea of, hey, you might have air units, you might be getting air control, and if you are, I'm going to need something a little bit extra than Vikings of my own to deal with this. This drop does a little bit of something, but man, there's Vikings and missile turrets everywhere. This is just a bio donation from Bjorn. He'll get a few more drop-offs, but there's so little to really gain from this, and that's the problem. When Maru is set up like this, it just feels like these attacks are also just almost always just obsolete. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, not happy with that. He's gonna have a lot of potential recovery though. Like the kind of the Zerg player here. It is expected, especially if you're still on bio, to forfeit some units. The ideal situation being a cost-efficient trade, but then also just again reducing that critical mass or finding them severely out of position. It's really just not even possible anymore. <laughs> there's Sim City, there's extra planetaries, there's missile turrets, there's tanks in numbers that they can kind of cover all the situations. And yeah, again about that timer, Maru might be able to do a push out. And then Bion is going to really have to hope that his air army can do the trick. And it kind of can, but like you really would want to have a decent number of liberators and then liberator range, which I think he did get. I just missed it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, he did get it. And then you also want to make sure that you're trying to utilize like some chokes, you know? If enough Thors or Cyclones, actually, as we see more being produced, do get underneath the Liberators, they get popped pretty quickly. And the issue is there's nothing to zone out those uh, Cyclones from running in because there's like zero tanks on the map from Oh, Bion. yeah, geez. He has like nothing to work with here apart from just Bio, which can only go so far. Well, it's going to be an interesting fight, that's for sure, because it's so rare you see one side just tankless in these situations. So Bjorn has putting all of his hopes and dreams for this first game into that basket, which contains the air units. Let's we'll see if his Viking lip force will be able to, prevail, to prevail. That's actually a very good point. And it's very intentional right at this point. Bjorn has had some supply, not anymore. As he actually looks to take the engagement, he knows that he'll win the pure air war, but when the Thors also get involved, it's a little more questionable. And obviously those Thors are getting involved. He will absolutely win the air war. That was just way more Vikings than his opponent. But it's more of the question of can he then leapfrog forward himself? Morrow is drawing a line in the sand, at least in the middle of the map. Now that's his bouncing off point and also his fallback point with some static defense coming down there. And Bjorn decides to make that even further commitment to air units as he goes towards the Amato Cannon. He's going to get the battle cruisers online potentially. So he really says, this is my late game and I'm sending it there. But he is going to be under a little bit of pressure. This gold base may be in a little bit of trouble here, perhaps. Uh, maybe the Liberators from the high ground here could siege up and do well. We see the Vikings obviously will not be much of a factor. So it's really the Libs versus the world. And the Thors are really struggling to get in position. So this is going to work out. Those Liberators get to do a lot of work, picking off a lot of siege tanks. And Bjorn gets a very successful cleanup. Yeah, those Thors, Thors were as derpy as they can be. Sometimes they get locked behind each other. Sometimes they're just so large that even a decent looking concave opportunity is kind of meh, but that was just the terrain, 100%. And the Cyclones were trying to do all the jobs, basically, of taking care of the air and whatever ground was there, but their numbers weren't as high as they are now because Mara has recognized that maybe mobility can favor him. Uh, it, it could be desperation as well. Sometimes you see those Cyclones, especially pre-patch, but maybe it is, maybe it isn't. The point is it actually can be effective. The Cyclones can now be the ones that re-maneuver and exactly this catch the air army not sieged up and running over them. Yeah, those Cyclones putting in some work. Liberators have got a lot to do here, but it looks though like that Liberator count is going down drastically. There's only five left on the map following this, and they need to get set up right now. So Bjorn losing track of Maru's army. Maru getting the jump on him a little bit here. And now again, if that Liberator count isn't high enough, you don't get rid of the anti-air units soon enough at all. The Vikings are going to decide this is where they land to try and bring the defense. Can they do enough? Nine Liberators on the way in production, but we're just not going to get there as Maru's push is finding some Success. He's going to break through the goal base and Bjorn's army is absolutely all gone. Yeah, Maru is scanning to see just how rich this guy possibly is. But even if Bjorn had all the bases with all the SCVs mining, the fact is his production is very close to being camp. So as we do see 11 Liberators being produced at once, and that is really impressive. It's still a problem because Bion is going to have his production possibly in trouble. He's going to lose access to these bases. He's going to use up the bank that he did have, trying to remax and not even quite succeeding. And things are just now absolutely a comeback opportunity. If, if there is one, it's going to be called a comeback. Bion tries to go for the attack, but the Thors, actually, they're not going to get in range. The Liberator count was high enough, but here come the Cyclones on the backside. And there you go, the mobility shining once again. Yeah, mobility has been the answer here. The Cyclones try and run through the Liberation Zones. A few of them do survive through to the other side, so the damage continues. The Liberators drop once again. And again, that gun had a lot of control over early. Hits the typical brick wall, which is that defense of Maru. He thought he had a moment with the drop on top of that army, and that was really the turning point where Maru suddenly was in such a better position. And now he's just played it spot on. I do think Bjorn was maybe like a few moments to survive and away from being like, okay, now I build into some BCs. Yeah. And that would have been very interesting to see how Maru then dealt with that. Yeah, it would have. The, the problem with BCs, um, you know, is obviously their ability to Yamato and transport away or transport in if you're really playing Gambly, I guess, uh, which obviously a ground-based anti-air army would struggle the most with. So that would kind of take advantage of the whole I'm going Cyclones, not Vikings. 
But I just I do just wonder if that would have been enough as Mara was looking to mobilize and get around the map and the battle cruisers respond to them. It's a little bit worse. We are absolutely seeing the last few moments of this game, guys, which is why we're discussing possibilities rather than the thing that's happening on the screen. So yeah, Beyond's not gonna tap out until he's fully completely dead, especially because he has some bases mining, but there's that production getting camped. Yeah, I mean, he's just gonna be dying to the slow push at this stage. You lose little by little. There's not really anything you can do to break out of, you know, tanks camp, you know, natural. They're going to go siege up on other bases around the map as well. Bjorn has no way to access those locations as, yeah, I mean, a couple BCs are popping. They are going to have to work some absolute mad magic if they want to get back in. They do teleport up and deal with the tanks on the picture in pictures. So that is something at least, but they've got a lot more work to do than a few tanks up there. This entire army is on your natural and making stuff happen. And once those battle cruisers use their teleport, they're much worse. Like now they have to come back into the amount of cyclones here and there's not enough battle cruisers to do the whole like jump on top and i'll just win because they're the better units that's not really how it works right now and obviously beyond is going to try vikings even landing trying to help out but a couple of siege tanks from Morrow helping to clean that number out it is going to maybe be a last second hold as far as the armies we're watching here but then look at the mini map look at the supply as todd would say and airy finally have the gg maru will win game number one, as you said, doing a typical thing, defending, stopping Gyan from finding that one moment, and then eventually winning a late game TVT. Yep, and Maru TVT in a nutshell, you couldn't have written the script better, right? He picks the more defensive style, his opponent's quite aggressive, gets the edge in the early stages even, and Maru just puts up that super defensive position where he says, nope, you're not getting past me. You're gonna have to do something spectacular. And I think Bjorn almost knew he had to do something spectacular, hence the triple drop, run in, yeah. try to kill him in that moment, but it just wasn't quite the moment that Bjorn thought it was. And so Mara really was able to, again, regain control from that. That's this moment here. And you see one medevac goes down full, the second and third medevac never fully unload either. Mm -hmm. And because you're coming through this choke point, the tanks take forever to get in position to siege up. It was just not what Bjorn envisioned. And uh, yeah, from here, the Liberators looked as though they gave Bjorn a good chance. It was just the moment that Maru abused their mobility. Immediately, they, they suffered. Yeah, 100%. The, the Cyclones, like I was saying, there, there are situations where you look at it and you're like, oh, well, you just can't win the air war. Like, let's see how this works out. But this now is a very just decisive and good maneuver. Like, it, it just gives your army suddenly the mobility that uh, mech is not the one that's supposed to have it. And Mar used it very, very well. It also gives that kind of more instant reinforcement feel, too. So if you do gain momentum, you do keep it. I do wonder what that game would have looked like. Of course, in one scenario, Byun's attacks are a little bit more effective, and he's really got Maru on the ropes. But in the second scenario, if Byun had really played quite turtly himself and added in more tanks... Like if there was, let's say, 10 tanks on the field instead of whatever amount of bio that he had with the Liberators and Vikings, then I can imagine there's a lot more of those push-ins that we saw at that last, one of those last battles where the tanks obliterate the Cyclones and the uh, landed Vikings of Morrow and there was like some Hellbats in there as well. And then a missile turret line as well to help him out just in case things go really awry. But he was still playing bio Viking Liberator. And uh, he actually was the one that got out mobility so yeah it's funny how that works and it, it, you were right at some point you're like sometimes the cyclone's like a desperation thing but in this case it was just hey i think i can out mobile mo out mobilize you and it happened immediately like you just lost track they came in from the other side and hence mario gets the 1-0 lead in this qualifying match to the esports world cup the quarterfinals here in katowice well in the top right leading one to zero off to a great start from vitality it is maru In the bottom left of Hecate, we do have the Shopify Rebellion Blue Terran, Byun. Let's see what kind of styles we get round two of this one. As you already see a difference in immediate openers with a gas first of Byun. And Mary will go with the racks before any gases get taken in the first few moments. Yep. We might see a proxy or a cheese or, you know, basically to go to two racks eventually, but so far, I'm actually thinking that we might see an attempted greed before we see the attempted cheese, which is the very fast third CC that we saw Cure do on the first day, and then was it Morrow on the second day? It was someone on the second day. Um, that worked out very well, so yeah, that's uh, 
That's my unnecessary bet. <laughs> we do have both players one racks expanding, so that's already a little bit more greedy. It's just that Maru is going to bother the SCV scout as well. Yeah, I mean, again, clash of stars, right? Pion will take every risk and possible, like, you know, corner cutting kind of mechanism, including not scouting, whereas Maru just says, you know what, I am going to scout. This game, it kind of makes sense. Maru's looking for the faster expansion to some extent. He went at least racks, then gas. My Pion goes gas, then racks, so it's a little bit safer, arguably, in terms of time as a factory, but mm -hmm. in the end, that's both going to end up putting an expansion down. Bjorn will even pop his down on the high ground. He does seem to like that more than a lot of other Terrans, yeah, would be comfortable. Does it all the time. Yeah, exactly. All matchups as well, apart yeah, from yeah. TVT. Exactly, all matchups, uh, meaning TVT and TVP. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but then Maru, I mean, not only is he more willing to take that little bit of a chance while, you know, low ground expanding. He did actually SEV scout. So that SEV scout would have worked uh, wonders if it was a two racks, which obviously Bjorn is very capable of doing. I'd even say more likely to do nowadays. Obviously, five years ago, Mara was 100% the two raxer. But um, so that also meant that in the opposite effect, seeing that he was doing a similar build, he's like, oh, great. Yeah, 100% on the low ground. That is going to make up for the SEV scout right there. Yeah. And it's, uh, otherwise, you see the gas first factor kind of coming in a little bit sooner. Factory just finished up. And we do see Maru instantly into a reactor as well, so he is not messing around. And as the starports come in, and we'll wait to see just who gets to be aggressive first. I mean, Bjorn is a few moments later on his own reactor, so again, you're trading out a couple of you know, an advantage here or an advantage there. The first Cyclone starts up. I was surprised, you know, that Maru was the Cyclone guy, and then Bjorn was like the tank defender guy at the start of that yeah. last game, just because to be the defensive player, I mean, to me, Mario was the first player really saying, hey, I can just make a tank and defend against these Cyclone openers. A lot of other players felt as though they took it from him and kind of went through with it. So, yeah, it was a little bit of a trade of stars at the start of game one. And I do wonder where every Terran's comfort zone is now. It's been a couple of months. Obviously, the Korean ladder was probably full of it just before Atlanta. And, uh, you know, what is wrong speculation or right, I don't know, but Beyond did kind of feel like he didn't really want to, but then he has been doing the Cyclone openers 100% in his other TVTs, but then also I would dare say, you know, we think of him as a classic Marine tank player, because that's what we think of every <laughs> TVT as. So does he like that? Was he hoping to really get a surprise, just throwing it in strategically in a best of five? That also makes sense. And this time, he's not going to do that. He is going into the Cyclones. He is going into the Medivac. The Medivac coming in has one Cyclone. It does hit a little bit faster than the opposing build that Maru is showing. So that's its strength. And then hopefully everyone has their Cyclones on the defense. Yep. And those first Cyclones making their way across. Bjorn is going to arrive a little bit sooner, but with one less Cyclone, has a couple of Marines to act as buffer. Let's see if we can get in for some damage. There's already one Cyclone here. This is seeming unlikely. Here's the medevac advantage, perhaps for some micro. As we do run forward there is Maru. He took a couple extra shots. He actually brought his medevac back home. So at least for Bjorn here, you say, hey, look, he's not attacking me straight away. And now, you know, there is maybe not a chance for the Cyclones to do damage opposite of the map anyway. But we have Bjorn's little Reaper Hellion hit squad coming in, killing four SCVs. Slight delay on a supply depot, too. But there's... <laughs> Almost runs right into those two Cyclones. Uh, obviously, Maru is trying to say, like, and not really worth it to try and do that equalizing amount of damage. My drop is so much later. Let's just pull it back. And now clearly isn't going to have that drop anytime soon as it is even staying here to spot Bjorn's medevac. So in terms of that map control, Bjorn's got it. But Maro is displayed already in the series, in his career, that he is also quite comfortable being the defender. So not too worried about that. But you can see that both of them just continue to pump out those Cyclones. Yep, Cyclone, Cyclone, Cyclone. We do see Stimpak starting up from Bjorn, at least. So you see the intentions of him moving in towards that bio style once again eventually. Uh, we'll wait to see what exactly it is. Plan from Maru for the next little while. He gets his interference matrix upgrade finished soon. And yeah, we'll see if he's ever going to stop building Cyclones or not. You know, I, I well, hold on. I uh, know there's plenty of Cyclones tomorrow. I said that interference matrix from Bjorn could be big, but I didn't actually didn't check if he had gotten it. Is he getting it in this game? It's already he's done. It. It's yeah. already done. It's actually a very quick and cheap upgrade. So, yeah, it helps out mostly in TVP. His TVP is pretty much a go-to in TVT, pretty much. And uh, then it's a question of what is the correct spell. If we did see them clash with the Cyclone Raven battle, then it'd be auto turret. But now as we do move over for both of them into Marine Tank, it is going to probably be more about the Matrix, but that is the current situation. Both players going into classic bio versus bio. 
Yeah, I'm just uh, going to go kind of take a throw back to usual TVT. As Bjorn is a little bit faster on some of the upgrades here. It's going to be Maru moving across the map, though. Has a slight army supply lead. Bjorn defensively with a bunker setup and all the rest. I feel like he should be fine. He is down one Raven. That's it by choice as well. He just cut his Raven production sooner to move away and to start doing other things. So, again, essentially just a faster transition from Bjorn. But if Maru doesn't do much here, then I'd say he's gone away with it. But where are the Ravens of Bjorn? Not nearby to help with auto turrets. Oh. They're across the map, going to try and deal some damage. Well, that means that Bjorn has to pull SCVs to make sure this doesn't get out of hand. He has got a couple of tanks. They are going to have to put in some work right now as he's losing a ton of SCVs. But hey, he got a lot of SCVs too, just not as many as Maru did. And he's just now finishing off those final couple Cyclones. Yeah, 21 SCVs killed versus 12. Maru does lead the economy by about nine. One the last Raven with an auto turret, I believe, to chase these guys down, try and equalize that a little bit more but it doesn't seem like it is going to happen. As far as the actual trade of units, I think we'll see that in a second. Just this, yeah, again, last auto turret. One, ah, one, two. two. So yeah, two more. So that's a five worker deficit for Bjorn, a, a five army supply advantage, but what is the army supply in? That's what I wanted to check. Yeah, he, he did save all of his tanks, Bjorn did. So he now has two tanks, and what does Maru have setting up in that natural? That is the big question as Bjorn looks to try and use this slight army supply advantage to get that counter. And that's the first tank popping out now for Maru. The Ravens do have energy for Maru. That is going to be extremely helpful, but this is Bjorn's time to truly equalize things as he's down four workers, but his third CC is coming onto location. Yeah, these tanks are going to try and push their way into position. He moves in just as that tank and sieges the Marines. Do you have a stim available? And a couple of those racks of marriages available to be hit from that left-hand side. So they're going to be vulnerable, but there's that Raven energy available. And that Raven energy really feels as though it could make the difference here. Spion's already the one taking shots. So he's going to have one tank made, the other tank gets lost. And this is a good cleanup from Maru. And he was dealing damage with that medevac. Yes, he was. And the picture in picture, we saw the natural, and now apparently the main base under attack by a single Marine. He's trying. It's going to actually get out of there, scout the third season already on location. Not a big shock, as Maro probably anticipated it, having to close up in his natural and make sure that he survived. He does not have the SEV lead anymore. He doesn't have the minerals. But now he does have almost a 20 army supply lead, should equalize on the combat shields uh, by the time he actually reaches across the map. Now, for me, the question is, will he equalize on upgrade? I would say yes, Beyond Tank should hold on for both of them to have 1-1, one, one, and then there'll be a very similar army tomorrow, which is a handful more Marines. Yep, those extra Marines, a little bit more buffer, but at the right position, an extra bit of buffer doesn't always go a long way. Still just beyond harassing with these Ravens, you know, never coming back home, never using themselves defensively, and that's a major thing missing from the bigger fights, that Maru will always have Raven casting going into a bigger engagement. That's huge, Matrix says, even an anti arm missile maybe in the right moment, as Maru is going to wander up this ramp. He's going to get there, taking a couple tank shots. I'm not sure I love this fight from Maru, but he gets the Matrix down. Those Ravens are immediately effective. Yeah, he actually was just able to get... Uh, enough up that choke not to get completely blasted then he had those extra marines so even though that tank got a couple extra shots off the interference matrix had to come down a little later that was the move maru pushes through and is now pushing into the natural of beyond armory gets destroyed or finder gets destroyed and the scvs do have to be pulled but into the slaughter they go that is not going to be it Maru with decisiveness, with that ability to read the situation after the scan, forces his way up the ramp and will take the second game in his TVT. Maru just showing a bit of dominance, quite frankly, right? Just looking good. Wins out the early, you know, said, okay, you know what? You want to attack me first? I'll just play defensive. I'll just wait for you to kind of end up in a weirder spot. And then when he did go across the map with everything, Fionn had his Ravens on the other side. That initial trade definitely went Maru's way. And from there, unfortunately, just didn't feel like Bjorn ever quite got a grasp on the situation again. I, I feel like he just stayed in the bases too long with these Ravens. I don't know if he felt like he just had to catch up on STV kills, but to never have them in any of the fights felt pretty devastating. I guess he really was valuing the, the trade-off, right? Which is like the Ravens, even if they came back, maybe they wouldn't come back fast enough. They still wouldn't have maybe as much energy, uh, depending on when they came back, I suppose. And theoretically, we do see a lot of TVTs go into that place where Ravens can do kind of their own thing, and then tanks and Marines and Defender's Advantage does cover you. And arguably, it could have for Bion. That tank only kind of catching, like, uh, half the Marines, shall we say, going up the ramp was a, you know, it was a big deal. And then there might have been a second tank just not in position. Not certain about that one, but it's possible because he had to worry about both that ramp and his third base that another critical unit was out of position. So you absolutely have to 
to play pristine from that point for Beyond using the Ravens as you do. But it would have maybe been theoretically possible. It's just that Morrow is so decisive and so good and had the scout with those scans to say, oh, no, okay, I can take that on. All right, well, let's take a look at the trophy. We are going to get ready to go into game three of this best of five. Bjorn going to have to turn it around. Game one felt like there's a little bit more hope for Bjorn than game number two. Problem is, it's just it's Maru, and he's absolutely shown why his DVT was feared for so long, why it still is feared, why it is some of the very best out there. As we get ourselves ready to go into the game number three, Maru and Bjorn are about to be playing on site Delta. Yeah, this could get action-packed pretty quickly. It is one of the maps where we saw the battle cruiser shenanigans from Maru in Atlanta. But uh, that's a little less likely. This is shorter. It is closer as you expand. And they have been looking for those early game advantages, even arguably pushing the issue a bit too much. Like in game one, they definitely were trying to get that little bit of an edge. Game two, it felt like they did kind of chill as far as the very early game units, but then it did come down to Cyclone Harass and Raven Harass. Then of the day, Maru leads two to zero, looking again as strong as ever in his best matchup. And now he is spawning in the top left of Site Delta for Vitality. He is Maru. In the bottom right hand side, he will need some energy, he will need some love, so make some noise for Shopify Rebellions Bjorn! <laughs> I love the signs in the crowd. They've been having me giggle the last couple of days as we get set up here. On site Delta, one of the maps with a ramp on that natural, which takes away some of the cyclone aggression and can encourage you to maybe play more into that tank early. Yeah, and it does seem like we're shifting more into normalcy for TVT, so that's kind of what I'm expecting. Again, possibly both players going for a medevac, depending on which medevac version it is. We saw last game they both did the uh, both options basically at this point. Before the patch, there was a lot of the tank drop medevac, and they both were doing a lot of that. Everyone was, but I think I don't think I've seen that in a long time. Cyclone just better. Yeah, for the most part, right. Just, uh, it's just so difficult to justify dropping the tank across the map nowadays, I think. Yeah, yeah. It is. It absolutely is. Winning that for the extra time with the tech lab to build, only having the one production uh, round, a uh, unit per round, and cyclones just pop out so fast, are so versatile, and are. Well, just so good. Let's let's be real. But now it is time to watch the builds unfold. Maru going for the much safer factory expand. Beyond figuring that he can get away again with a one rex expand. No scout this time on the low grounds. I mean, seems like such a normal thing to do, but I'll say it. It's maybe kind of taking a bit of a chance here, right? He knows that he is on the ropes, but knowing Maru as well as he does. I won't be too racks, it's gonna be okay. And then I'll get this little bit of a lead now that I was absolutely not able to get last game. Yep, as we're gonna jump into the first person view here for a few moments of Bjorn in the early game, as the immediate bunker going down. So he just says, ah, do you not wanna take any risks at all? He scouts just for the nearby proxies and yeah, just says, cool, get the bunker down, play it safe on my expansion and just set up into my next stage already and greet any aggression that comes my way with the safest possible setup I can have while expanding this quickly. And with this setup, I am kind of thinking more about the one cyclone into faster tank that he just played in, in game number one. Mm -hmm. And then instead of, uh, well, hopefully the game ends up going differently from that point, which is to say he gets to build up his tank count faster, getting to that type of more Marine tank Raven based army, and then actually does a push. And if the other player is committing to Cyclones and they're not playing absolutely perfectly as far as the scouting, as far as the micro goes, then suddenly on this map, the tank was just there. And the Cyclones are choked in on their side of the map or even up the ramp, and it's a it's a freaking disaster. But that's the call I'm making right now. We will see in basically a second that Cyclone was on the way. And then because he's moving so fast, I didn't exactly see what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> I think he put a tech lab down. There, yes, you're right, Eric. Thank you very much. Yes, exactly what he did. So we actually canceled the Cyclone, no? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, even even kind of more greedy, kind of in a way, but it's like trying to get away with something faster so that you then can get to the better thing at the time that is appropriate for any defense you have to make. Maru is still just opening Cyclones game after game, so he is yeah. just gonna send it one more time. Why, why change? 
Yeah, yeah I, I just really thought maybe with like the ramp. I know a lot of it initially comes down to this drop, but the ramp really means that the follow-up cyclone push is nigh on impossible to really execute, like attacking into the natural like we saw Mario do in the previous maps, right? So th that was kind of, I guess, my main surprise, but you know, they are still good. They still keep map control. You don't have to push in the natural. You can sit on the low ground and just take map control in that way as well. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and there's also somewhat of a chance that if the defending Terran, Beyond in this case, doesn't properly protect their tanks, because they're a high quality, low quantity type of situation right now, the Cyclones can jump on top of it, which Maro then tried to do in that first game and it, and it kind of failed. But he saw there that Beyond having it siege up in the mineral line, also with his you know rest of his fodder units ready to uh, defend it too, there is no open opportunity. So it is is absolutely what you were talking about, which is that Maru has to try and utilize Cyclones as well as possible, getting the pickoffs where he can, keeping track of where the army is going, and then ideally enough to make his own transition over into probably Biotank, but he did show mech in the first game. Yep, the last matter back poking in once again. Still more Cyclones, the production tab from Maru Bion is very much so continuing through into that faster stim pack. His own medivac popping soon, and of course, just continuing to produce tanks. What will be interesting is he's just not going to play with any of those Ravens. So without those, he's going to miss some potential, but that's just part of this style. That's part of this build right here. So it's going to be one thing he has to overcome at some stage. We'll see how he goes about it. I was got, I was gonna ask, is that something next to the right? And I'm just, again, I think this may have been during the first person view, but obviously beyond no third CC. Well, until now. But the point is to play third CC. That is absolutely big news, right? So he skips the Cyclone portion. He goes directly into a second barrack. So he adds on really, really fast stim. By the way, Maro is playing mech again, but Yun goes into fast stim, fast uh, just adaptation, uh, just going into the actual tank marine meta, and then he will have map control, everything going according to plan, especially something like a bit of a backstab, this one lone medevac getting across the map with these marines that again, almost have sim anyway, it is a surprise that Mara wasn't expecting, a single auditor will not do the trick as far as the defense goes. Nope, auditor not going to do so great against these marines, and there's nothing here yet, there's finally the uh... cyclones, the medevac does have the boost to get away a bit more quickly, and now Bjorn is pushing with everything else up the front. Remember, he does have stims, so those marines pretty powerful here. And Maru is playing with nothing but the Cyclones and Ravens for the moment. So we'll see how he executes his defense. He's even going to add on a couple of Hellions. So many Cyclones, though. And they are actually getting out in the map a little bit. They didn't let Beyond's push just... Oh, but that's why Beyond is, is stalled out. He had tanks siege up while he waits for further reinforcements, further critical units, and also hopes that Maro just runs blindly into it. Maro no longer blindly into it, scanning ahead, looking to see how he can use his Ravens, but reinforcements have arrived, and Beyond is going to continue this push. And if he does get sieged up, able to hit Maru's natural ramp. This is going to be so freaking difficult for Maru. It really is. These tanks are working their way forward. We're going to Matrix a bunch of them. Going to try and drop some auto turrets towards the back as well. The Marines are stimmed up, though. They're putting in some work. None of the tanks go down, so they should be able to press on forwards. Maru gets his first defensive tank of the game up that ramp. We'll see where Bjorn wants to try and set up himself as he can take his third base and location during this time now, whereas Maru is going to be very much so locked into these two bases. That was Maro double scanning, being like, oh, you are being more aggressive, aren't you, cheeky guy? Absolutely the case. He's going to have to make a hold here. SEVs have been pulled. The tanks are friendly firing, but they're also taking down many of the SEVs. This might be a hold, but it is Maru on the, the ropes. He's down in supply. He doesn't have a third CC, even though his Bjorn's was later. It's all on location. And that's just not something that Maru is going to get up and running anytime soon. Yeah, triple tank siege is here. There's one tank in reach. Bjorn is going to have the tank numbers to go at least one for one. He actually gets it without losing out. And again, every time we see him tank die from there, it's just one less piece of defense for Bjorn to have to go through. So that's always great. Just picking off a reactor here. And again, just putting the pressure on Mary, trying to get as much as possible over this initial push. Because you know there's still a point where maybe you can't end the game. You need as much of a lead as possible to really kind of, you know, take this down. We saw that in the first game. And as far as optimal time to go ahead and just kill a Terran in TVT, while well, they're still on two bases, it's kind of it. Once you get three bases, six gas for this factory player, it's going to get much, much uh, more difficult to do so. But you can see that Bjorn is succeeded in his attempt. That natural has been breached. Maru's supply is in the gutter. It's basically just the SVVs coming in for the fight right now. Bjorn is not going to be taken out of Katowice 3-0. He is going to fight back. 
GG. Bjorn gets a map on the board. He is able to fight back, as you say. And just a well-executed game, you know, clearly had the plan, clearly had the intentions of how this was going to work, what he was going to do. Took very patient fights initially, didn't just try and push up straight away into position. Said, okay, I'll siege back, then I'll go forwards. And really just took a few moments in setting up there. And Bjorn puts himself back in this series at the very least for now. Two maps to go, long way off, but a big step in the right direction is... Yeah, this fight was really important because the Ravens, they hit the Matrixes, but we just never got through to hitting those siege tanks down. Like, all of them survived. Yeah, and you can see just how much extra that, that barracks came in. The few extra Marines, yes, but then obviously having Sim at that time. And you don't have as drastic of a concern about, like, well, Sim or Combat Shields, which one is, like, the most helpful? Obviously both. Uh, Stim has mobility, Stim has DPS, combat shields, they let you survive another shot from a tank, which if Maru had also gone for more classic opener and had obviously more tanks than any tanks at all really, the lack of combat shields still would have been a concern for a direct fight. But just their DPS, their numbers were going to overwhelm the Cyclones there with the help of their own tanks, obviously, too. And that was just a very well-planned build, finally kind of getting away with exactly the plan he envisioned as well. Nothing went awry on a map that I thought was pretty perfect for it as well. You mentioned the ramp. It does make the Cyclone usage a little bit more difficult as far as finding that damage and then making sure that you play the absolutely perfect game with Cyclones after is difficult, even if that wasn't a faster second barracks. Just uh, reading through these guys having a chat in the lobby before we got into this one. They were having some fun. Bjorn was like, hey, you like my build? Mario's like, I think I hard counted it. You just got lucky. <laughs> so these guys are having a, a good time here in the quarterfinals. And in the bottom left, he's still just one map away from the Esports World Cup and the semifinals of Katowice. From Vitality, we have Maru. And in the top right of Solaris, we have for the Shop of our Rebellion, Bion. Really nice of them to also be typing in English, by the way. Yeah, I don't think they have Korean enabled on the on uh, stage PCs. Ah, uh, that before, would. Make sense. Before they were typing in Korean, but in English letters, you know. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Okay, that makes sense. Well, that means we can actually explain just how much they are good friends, and how much banter they do, which we saw on stage. Loved it. Yeah. There was that talk of Bion picking up Maru at that one tournament. Just imagine him picking him up like WWE style and just, just throwing him, like, him down. Be like, win the game now, Maru. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it. People say you can't defeat Maru, but one way you could defeat him slamming them to the ground. <laughs> it's like, is it in the rule book? Like, have we accounted for this possibility? We kind of had to, right? Because we we had to worry, I should say. Because at Atlanta, Bion did that, like, what did he do? Like a low kick? Like he went to go like trip something? We were like, what if he actually successfully tripped the guy? <laughs> like, that would actually be kind of concerning. But anyway, anyway. So obviously, Bion able to bring it back, very confident in his build order choice, very confident in the play there for, uh, thereafter. And Maru, even if he had scouted that second barracks faster, there was more of like a, oh, what the heck? What are you doing? Ah, uh, okay. No third CC, like, I know what you did. I wonder how he would have adapted. I guess it really does depend on when he would have scouted it. Obviously seeing it building would have been like, oh, okay, trying to change my plans. But seeing it as Tim finishes, like that probably doesn't give him a lot of time to adapt. Yeah, no, just, just a little bit too late on the information gathering. And that's been a big part of it though, right? Like Mario has very rarely gotten across the map super successfully with the medevac. You know, he lost it in that first game with the Cyclones inside. And you know, in the pre in game two, he brought his medevac back home to play defense. So he's just not getting across the map with that harassment. That is usually then also the additional scouting info, right? So yeah, t tough to find that if you don't get that medevac across the map. And Bjorn's made that the kind of the precedent of this series. Also tough if you don't get any single tank snipe while they're still fairly low on units. They don't know exactly where your medevac is coming in from. So absolutely, the tank in the natural could have gotten taken down. The tank in the main was in Maru's sights and then decided better of it. One less tank could have made that final battle very different still. We go on to a larger map, a little less of that direct confrontation. Uh, so certainly not as skinny. And so can encourage a more macro game in general. But most importantly for the early game, there is no ramp this time. So if Maru wants to stick to his guns, continue playing into the Cyclones, would be you know, a little more effective. 
I do have him swapping over to the reactor, so it's definitely Cyclones. Oh, what a surprise, man. We're getting the Cyclones going once again. Bjorn again, kind of on his own kind of variation, right? Where he's going to have the few units plus the single Cyclone on the medevac initially. We saw actually on that uh, attempt last time he did this, the Reaper Hellion got a few SCV kills. And it's like, okay, well, that went well. You know, the distraction in the main really opened the door for the Reaper Hellion to get through and deal some damage. Hmm. And uh, could be something similar again, as obviously Bjorn is also now on a reactor. And it's also building up into Cyclones. This could be a very quick game indeed, actually, as we have a micro battle. Both players losing the Reapers, and so now the Hellion. God. <laughs> it's popped over the Reaper's head. Yeah, yeah. but it does die. Uh, obviously, it's not going to impact too much more, but it means that Morrow might get a scout. He's, I mean, he's already committed to his build, obviously, and he didn't scout at the medevac from Bian already raced across the map, because again, single Cyclone, a couple of extra units, not double. So this was uh, similar to what, game number two? Maru did choose to pull back, and that seems to be the case once again, figuring the timing was lost on his drop anyway, possibly two. Ideally, as the two Cyclone player, if you can come back and get a lock onto that medivac, it's fairly likely to die, even if uh, the Cyclone lock-on doesn't do as much as it used to, but not the case here. And we do have them going into, uh, at least Maru going into Stim first and foremost. So he's not adding on that second barracks, right? But he's absolutely added on the Stim upgrade faster, more intention to go into the bio. So it's not going to be that quick game that I was envisioning. I was absolutely worried both of them would continue making Cyclones, continue making Ravens, and then try and just defeat each other in each other's naturals. Not going to be the case. Yun might be the one who tries with his current composition, but Maru is the one that's making that step forward into bio faster. Faster. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. It's uh, it's interesting because obviously it's just a different tendency to previous games. It's always been beyond having that slightly faster stem and that next setup ready. But yeah, Mario's going to be changing up himself this time around. Let's look through his eyes for a few moments and as this early game TVT does get established. Obviously, just at this point, you want to make sure everything's set up defensively in case some harassment comes in. You can be anywhere you need to in a couple of moments. Make sure there's not going to be even a couple of SCVs going down. Uh, no movement with any Ravens across the map either, not looking to order turrets and mineral lines. So yeah, everything just focused on being the defensive setup for now at the moment. I think I'd be terrified if I was Maru, but he's obviously very confident. But without a bunker, when you are trying to make that transition happen on a map without a ramp, and the only scout you have is a Marine going down the center of the map, which may see the incoming attack. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I'd be a little concerned, but whereas we saw Bjorn make sure to just be totally rock solid in the defense and his attempt to kind of move on into his little two base attack, which was very neat. He got a bunker. Maro's like, ah, don't need it. I don't know exactly what you're doing, but I figure I don't need it. And he's uh, so far right about that. Even now sending a medevac drop off. I'm not sure where uh, Bjorn is at. There's a couple, oh, well, I, maybe I should have expected this. Bjorn loves yeah. sending his ravens across the map and then going for auditory harassment. Yeah, shows up, just drops the one this time around, says, okay, units in position, not getting much out of this, so he will just back away with those Ravens. I really wouldn't mind seeing the Ravens rejoin just the army compared to that in previous games where he put so much emphasis on trying to deal damage. The medevac of Maru about to arrive into the main base of Bjorn, who has got a couple of tanks. He's actually very set to go maybe onto the map a little bit. A few SCVs can transfer to the third. As the Cyclones drop down, some SCVs will indeed begin to fall from this harassment. Yeah, a couple, and the medevac will survive. Our observer was highlighting the lack of interference matrix upgrade from Bjorn, which is actually very interesting. As I was saying, it's kind of expected. Um, there was obviously some experimentation with not bothering to go for it in the early days of the patch, and then there was the question of if you needed it when it became just the Cyclone Raven burst battles, but generally we've been seeing it upgraded because it absolutely is still a very strong spell for if you get into this type of TVT. And even though the longer this goes building up Marine Tank, the harder it might be able to use Ravens, get their spells absolutely correct with all the Marines running around everywhere, if you do use them correctly, they're still freaking good. So I really like Maro's position here. Three Ravens with the Interference Matrix upgrade. He is moving across the map with his upgrades for his bio as well. Losing SCVs to the Auditory Harassment, however, and a plenty of SCVs at that. But the Ravens are now in complete 
completely out of the defensive equation for Bjorn, and Maru is looking for an attack. Maru has so much potential with this fight. Bjorn is finishing up some of his own bio upgrades. He's far, not far off combat shield as well. Cyclone's running to the third base, even less for Bjorn defensively, though. I mean, yeah, puts the pressure on Maru. Maru is going to absolutely, uh, Bjorn's absolutely going to have to, sorry, pull some SEVs in to defend most likely, but Maru is actually setting up to kind of play a slower game. And I mean, Bjorn sets up his siege tanks. We remember those Ravens are full. They've got six matrixes available. Yeah, that's uh, that's a lot. I mean, even the auto turret output, you know, if there is an opportunity, you can go for it. But Maru choosing a bit of a slower approach, sees the opportunity to siege his tanks in the corner. Wanted the Marines to drop out, but especially because they weren't even fully unloaded. Bion's Marine count is totally fine. And this is really key. Bion has an even army supply, even though he's now missing the Ravens, because he has an even army supply and the tanks, although only two of them here are actually none in this particular battle. Maru actually gets jumped upon despite being the aggressor and might not have his reinforcements in time or maybe just in clutch in time. But also the disables have evaporated. The tanks getting involved in the fight. Bion's big, beautiful concave now coming in on top of the leftover tanks of Maru is going to mean that Bion holds on three bases. His upgrades have finally started. He still has a decent supply. He just needs to get into position. Yeah, position is going to be everything here. There's another tank siege up from Maru, but he gets a tank siege up of his own. It was so important that Bjorn took the fight to Maru to buy time yeah. for those Matrixes to fade away and then fall back. Yes, he lost a lot of Marines, but then his tanks were able to come through into the fight instead of him losing his tanks quickly. That was a big step in the right direction for Bjorn. It's a hard choice to make to kind of take the fight that doesn't feel great, but it was the better of the two evils, and I think it saved him. As now he still has that worker lead, he even has that uh, setup going across the map as well. So Bjorn looking to deal damage once again as Maru figures out where the next point of attack will be from him. Bjorn has some defense set up, but not everything necessary. Like I say, that attack's getting dangerously close on the bottom side. In we go. There's a drop coming into Maru's main base as well as his third, and that is going to completely pull his main army back. So that fourth base on location will work for Bjorn. He gets to. Uh, get his cake and eat it too, basically, because he's dealing damage to his opponent's economy and then getting his economy up and running. And a decent bit of loss of mining alongside eight, nine, 10 SEV kills. The Medivac might even live to come back later. Beyond absolutely bringing this best of five back into his control. He even has a slightly faster upgrade lead as the Medivac does side of the missile turret, but he even has plus two armor a bit faster. And I think that he should feel very confident in this situation. The scan of Maru now says, oh man, that, that was like that literally five Marines could have gone over there and gotten a stop, maybe even a cancel. But that's now done. He can't do anything about it. He is going to be playing from behind on the fourth base timing. No, that is very true. Bjorn's definitely established advantages off of the lead early, right? He, he didn't slow down. He's done things in the right way to kind of ensure he's got some leads at the end of it all. And now, as you see, Maru is going to take a step forward with all these Marines. He's going to stim up over here. There's a tank in position. Maybe he wants to try and find the sensor tower. That's not going to work out either. Bjorn will defend and deflect. And Maru just now finishing up his 2 2 upgrades. As Bjorn finishes his zone, we'll continue into 3 3. That regard, it's going to remain a pretty even game. Bjorn's still just ahead, those few SCV CGs. So every little bit of time that goes by, Bjorn is mining that tiny bit more. But you know what also is happening as time goes by? Maru's getting more defensive. Yeah, we get deeper into a late game TVT, <laughs> which Maru is very good at. So even though Bion had a really action-packed sequence of events right there, getting really hype as far as just the amount that he was getting away with, it is going to calm down. And uh, unless Bion can keep it up here, as he actually finds not enough tanks defending the fourth base, then he's had to face late, late game Maru. But this is exactly what he needed to do. Perfect timing. Maru very dissatisfied with that because if he knew the attack was on the way, he absolutely had enough units. They just needed to be in position. Yeah, positioning is everything in TVT as Maru is going to take a loss in a sense tower as well. So less information to be gained as Bion can continue to move around the map. And look for more opportunities, loads up a big chunk of units now, does not want to let momentum slip away. He feels like he's got Maru in a little bit of a troubling spot and he wants to keep taking advantage of it. And Maru is, str Maru is struggling, that little bit of less, less economy, what has that meant? Well, no 3-3 starting, for example. So that's a way Bjorn gets further ahead, deeper into this game. These medevacs do dive through, they will get in wow. here. One tank could siege, I mean, uh, I kind of feel like we should have just sent everything. Now we're gonna unload in the main base, which will get some damage done too, but fighting with two halves this drop, well, maybe it doesn't matter because the attack on the third now is going to find just a few siege tanks and they are not necessarily going to be enough. The SCVs pull in as 
Bjorn is going to power through and tie up this series, taking us to game number five. Absolutely excellent. Stopping Maru just at the right time. Maru was so close to getting his tanks in position on the high ground. Planetary set up at the fourth base. And if he had gotten that, none of these other distractions would have mattered. The three drops might have still gotten in and been a bother, but then he has the fourth base totally covered. He knows he can count on that. And the third CC is also probably a little more protected because he can just think of that in advance. Everything came in at the right moment for Bjorn multiple times in this game because you're absolutely pointing out correctly how this fight worked in Bjorn's favor. That split second decision to choose to go after the guy pushing into you to save your tanks to allow them to battle it out as well it was fantastic. Really keeping Bjorn alive in this tournament, in this best of five. And now it all comes down to game five on hard lead. We've kind of seen everything so far. Some of the games rising to a, a rising, but being the expectation, which is that Maru is a little more defensive, Bjorn's a little more aggressive, but then sometimes it flips, sometimes it's Cyclones, not Cyclones, sometimes it's Mech, not Mech. Anything could happen here in Hard Lead, including Eden a Cheese. That's very true. Game 5, just kind of take it all the way to something a little bit cheesy, perhaps. Mix it up that little bit. Just as we get to the end of this series, it has not been very cheesy at all up until now. It's been pretty standard with our openers. Maybe it is time to mix it up and just catch your opponent when they're least aware of the possibility. You kind of think about, is he Cyclone or just tanking again? And then boom, Reapers show up early. Maybe that's the golden opportunity. Yeah, especially because we've been seeing a couple of uh, One Rice expands, no SCV scout from uh, Bion, more so. But that is up to them. When it's all on the line, what does come out? Both of them showing confidence in the macro game. Might just continue with that. Bion clearly finding his groove as far as being the aggressor and Maru not able to get the damage done in that last game. I'm, I'm just watching the lobby face I, down once again. It's exciting. Yeah, it's you distracting, know. honestly. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I mean, it's very rare in these events and the uh, and little feed we have on the side. We get to actually see anyone interact in the lobby. But it, again, just a testament to how good a set of friends these guys are. As we get to game five of this TVT, a fight for the semifinals. Maru, he got denied at the final hurdle last year. He came in looking for vengeance this year. Might get stopped by his good friend Bjorn, who for Katowice semifinals would be, you know, one of his career highs, especially in the last few years. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it would qualify him into the eSports World Cup, which that's really what a lot of people are looking at right now. I guess it would be Maru. It seemed to be the right guess in the first two games, but Bjorn is pulling it back, proving my prediction wrong, and now we get to see what it all boils down to. This is going to be the final map of this best of five TVT in the top left of hard lead for vitality he is Maru and the bottom right he's brought us all the way to this fifth and final game after being down 02 can he keep it going Shopify rebellions Bjorn No SCVs being sent out, but Maru's camera just went all over the place. Approximately 50 screens per second. <laughs> just good. send up them camera hockeys. I mean, I do it, and I'm, I'm slow as heck, you know? Yeah. But then people are like, camera hockeys? What are those? And I'm like, ah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Better than them. Yeah. I'm so particular about it. I'm like, no, no, it needs to go like a tiny bit to the left. Perfect. Oh, I know, right? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and then you go over to it after you're building your command center and it's off. And you're like, oh, God forbid. No. All these years, I still can't send to my screen. No, apparently. Yeah, we can't. But at least we get our command centers on location. One Rocks expands, looks like, as uh, both players feel comfortable going into that early mid game. Or just early. I don't know I said early and mid, I guess is what I was going for. But Maru is going for the SEV scout, which has been a difference between the two. Now, Bjorn did have that game where he high ground command centered, so that kind of made up for it. But then from then on, and it seems like again here, he is going to go for the low ground. There is another thing that I want to mention as far as high ground expanding, by the way, which is that, yeah, it's more defensive, but it can also trick your opponent. So that, that is worth mentioning. I don't think it has in this series, but if they only scout the natural and then leave immediately, that could be deceiving. And obviously in this case, if they only scout the natural, that would be right on the money. That is absolutely a command center. Yes, it is. As we're going to see, Maru is going to start up 
A second Reaper, which means compar you know, comparatively his factory has turned out to be way later. So very interesting little uh, kind of discrepancy between the two. Marigan aggressive, Bjorn's Reaper's on the map, so he's gonna have a delay on his CC perhaps here. Comes back up the high ground, we'll see it now. He's got a Marine to help him here as well, but he takes a shot or two already. That ain't gonna help you out too much. This Marine needs to get in front and make a little bit of something happen. Decent grenade, I think it's just gonna be an SCV trade there. Gen looks so disappointed. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought that was honestly pretty okay. Yeah, I thought that was okay. It's like your SCV was building continuously. You saved yeah. both units. So, yeah. It's like, yeah, I, I'm not sure what he thought he was going to be able to get instead, but... He really did not want that Marine to jump <laughs> on the grenade. <laughs> He's like, man, Marine, bro, he could have been, you know, could have been the end of you. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Well, it's uh, back to the micro battle that, yeah, Bjorn should be able to win, especially as he went for a Helene, which is very safe as far as defending the very, very early game harassment. That is uh, the Reaper, so pretty freaking safe. Goes into the Cyclone after, and then the question is, does he go directly into that tech lab? It's been an effective opener for him. It's gotten him to the game that I think he does truly like best. There is still, honestly, a question as to where exactly people's heads are as far as their opinion of the Cyclone in this matchup. So it seems like both of them are kind of admitting it. And this is actually what happened in Atlanta, by the way, is that we saw a bunch of Cyclones, the extremely weird Cyclone games too. And then just all of a sudden, both Terrans were like, nah. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Back to Marine Tank. Cyclones are silly. Well, we will see a couple of Cyclones on the way out here from Bjorn, but you know, correct, it is going to be married for the first time, really switching it up away from Cyclones, right? Just Tech Lab finishing up on that factory. And, uh, Tech Lab starts on the starport as well. It's just going to go tank Raven here for the setup. Bjorn is going to get the Interference Matrix up. He has plenty of units to defend here. Can we just snag an SCV on the edge? No, we cannot. And that's going to be fine for Bjorn. One thing that's going to be a little awkward is that if Bjorn doesn't choose to be aggressive with this opener, which it looked like it was possible, like I was saying, like, oh, we could have a short game. It could be both of them going that eight Cyclone bust. Bjorn was more so the player that was going into it. He got more Cyclones, but then it, it, nothing actually ever happened with it. If it once again never happens, then Maru just gets away with this third CC. The timing of which you can punish the build of your opponent will be gone. Something we've seen in previous TVTs, kind of the faster you get your set up, even if it seems greedier at first, the better off you're going to be with it as the game continues. Maru's Reaper will get in and see actually a really good scout because I think he saw the factory, saw the reactor on it too. Yeah, 100%. So really great scout. He really has a solid idea as to what Byun's plan is. And now, of course, the concern is making sure you don't get bopped by a potential push. But it really is now the question, will Byun push? Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to say that I thought he was going to. I mean, he hasn't built the medevac, which to me suggests he really wants to focus on Raven's True. units that can go across the map immediately for one larger push. And I was kind of thinking, I, I want to see a bunker from Maru. Like, I'm a little bit worried. If these Ravens get double matrix on these tanks, you just have Cyclones versus Marines. This could get very messy very quickly for Maru, but Bjorn starts to find that opportunity. That's an absolutely good point. You know, I was talking about how this might take advantage of the way that Bjorn played last game, but the lack of medevac is really different. Well, this also for Bjorn might take advantage of that fear that I had for Maru, which is like, uh, no bunker, really, during this? Okay, all right, let's see how that goes. Obviously, Maru thinks that it is not necessary to a defense, but other things would still be necessary, such as kind of having an expectation that's on the way and having the control to uh, fight against it. That Hellion scout seeing the incoming initial army and probably assuming it's the rest of it as well. And indeed it is. Interference, which is coming down on one tank, two tanks. There it is. But auto turrets from Maru looking to soak up the lock-ons and deal some decent damage. Also, just by time, Maru's tanks will not go down in the fight, and if they don't go down, then Bjorn can't do anything more. And with this successful hold, Maru might even be able to push out a little bit and start to try and take his third. Yep. Uh, and, and this is where Maru, that faster third CC, that greedier style, is just all around going to give him a lead. Slightly faster upgrades. The SCV count is better off. And that's what Maru has done a little bit sometimes against these Cyclones, just say, hey, I can get away with being that little bit greedy. And this is one of those examples. It was a pristine defense, did exactly what he had to straight away. Tanks were deep enough that they never got exposed while matrixed. And he comes out in this position now where he's up in supply, and rightfully so, his build has paid off for him. He is still playing very defensive post that engagement, though. Missile turret on either side before his third CC is down. Basically, it's like when a third base uh, for a lot of the races is down and saturated or getting there, that's when they feel a little more comfortable affording some static defense, unless they know that their opponent is doing a very aggressive opener. 
but the missile turrets come down despite the uh, kind of you know the the push off of actual starport and medevac production which is what beyond is doing uh, the cyclones managing Thanks. to find a couple of pickoff right there Myro making a mistake as maybe he was focused elsewhere toward the beginning of that yeah, dropping some water turrets perhaps as the uh, Ravens do get through. A couple of SCVs only so far, but we'll hit the third base as well. This is also lost mining time, right? Those SCVs do pull away, the mules as well. They have to then go back. So it's SCV killed and lost mining time. And now you're pushing as Maru with this time where you've got one, one a few seconds ahead of your opponent. You've got an army supply lead. The only benefit for Bjorn is he's knocked a couple tanks down. He also have faster combat shields, but will that matter? I don't know if it will. Maru just blitzes into the third base, finds the third completely undefended, and Bion's drop that was heading across the map is just not soon enough. The possibility of this doing equal damage is so low, but Bion, of course, has to try. He has to hope that so many SCVs go down, plus a decent amount of Maru's army. No escape, as that missile turret is still up and running as well, and this is a disaster for Bion. He loses his third, he loses his SCVs, and he hardly does anything on the return. 12 is just not enough. Maru just really waited to bring the greediest of builds out all the way to this game five, and it just was good enough and you know then Bjorn you know was desperate to do a bit more but he just couldn't find a way to stop that army which means the third goes down from here this game is very difficult to come back from down a CC you're essentially all in with 30 less army supply I mean there's no good you can really do in this situation. Yeah, and I love that Maru, like even though I was like, oh, let's go that kind of fast missile turrets, he probably just knew exactly that Bion was gonna immediately yeah. follow up with a drop, right? He was like, I'm gonna have a little bit more defense there and I'm just going to jump on top of your undefended bases. It worked out brilliantly for Maru. He is not going to let this best of five slip away. He's back on the offensive. He's gonna stop that third CC on location. Anti-armor missiles for both players, but Maru just has the bigger army. It is only a matter of time before he he can break Beyond's two base setup. Yep, no, this is just a matter of time. Like you say, we've got Raven still here with a bit of energy, not even needed as we just dive on through. He does Matrix one final tank, and these Marines just keep pushing in as well. The remnants of an anti armor missile are still on Bion's forces. He pulls the SCVs as he's going to be saying goodbye to his Katowice run because Maru is in way too good of a spot. The tanks will continue to shell away. GG is called, and Maru is through to the semi finals. Had to take a little longer than he would have liked, being up 2-0 at the start and then seeing it start to slip away, but the build choice and the way that he played out.